Welcome to the Study On Podcast. I'm your host, Angie Bauman, and I am passionate about Bible study. Friend, my journey has not been an easy one. I am a trauma and abuse survivor, and I still walk with a limp. But I also walk in freedom because as I've studied God's word, he has released me from layers of shame and invited me into a life filled with an abundance of his peace, joy, rest, and hope. I'm transformed because I study the Bible, and my heart's desire is to create offerings that help you get and stay in your Bible so you experience that transformation too. So thank you for spending a few minutes with me. Maybe it's as you enjoy your coffee or with pen and notebook ready, or you're driving to work or walking the dog from wherever you are in your day. Let's dive deep into a verse of scripture together. So we walk steady on. Let's get started. Welcome, friend, into a bonus guest interview episode that shares the testimony of someone whose life has been transformed through studying the Bible. Our guest today is Christy, award-winning, best-selling author of biblical novels, Me Sue Andrews. Me Sue calls herself a spiritual mutt because she grew up in a family practicing several different faiths. Even so, she found herself believing the Bible was something used more for wounding than healing and had mostly rejected God's love by her teen years. Then her now husband came into her life and introduced her to God's love through teaching her how the Bible was the story of God's love for her. And it began in Misu, a love relationship with the Word of God that now overflows into the popular books she writes. Misu is candid about the path she walked and how God met her in her need and called her to believe in and share his love for her. Let's listen in. Misu, welcome to the Steady On community. We're so glad you are here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to chat with you. I am too. I just, I love this so much. All right. Talk to us about your relationship with Bible study. How did you realize that God wanted to touch your life through his word? Oh, it, you know, it was a long and winding road. Um, I did not grow up loving the Bible. The Bible, when I grew up, was kind of, it, it was used as a weapon to wound. Um, I, I'm a spiritual mutt. So my, my mama is charismatic. My dad was a Quaker. My grandparents were pilgrim holiness. And I'm telling you what, I, I grew up completely and thoroughly confused by what the Bible was saying. <laughs> Everybody had their own little idea and they'd pull out a scripture here and pull out a scripture there. And so I had no idea what the Bible said as a whole. And so for me, the Bible was just a weapon. And by the time I was 16, I was an alcoholic. By the time I was 19, I was in a mess. And um, I, an, a relationship I'd been in for about five years with a fella uh, ended and that did not go well. And so some friends of ours from mine from high school set me up just to go out on a Friday night with a guy that was also friends of ours. Um, he had gone to college and gotten religion. And I'm like, it's okay. I've been around those people all my life. Not a big deal. And I'm like, yeah, but he's, he's, I hear he's really weird now. Okay. So we went out and he just was very, very different. I thought, my goodness, what did those people do to you down there in Texas? Oh my, you are very strange. And you know, we got to the end of that night and he didn't talk about Jesus or the Bible or any of that. He just was very different. I only agreed to go out with him because I thought, you know, I don't think he can pull this off a second time. And so, but by Georgie did, he still was very different, even on that second date. And by about the sixth date, he led me to the Lord mm. and he did that with Genesis 3.15, not John 3.16. And it was because in Genesis 3.15, he said, this is where Jesus comes into the story. Mm -hmm. It's here where, where we as a human race betrayed God's love for us. 
And the Bible is a love story from cover to cover. And it's your story. And when when Adam and Eve sinned, it was a betrayal of their love for God. It wasn't just disobedience. It was a love betrayal. And he said, from that moment on, God said to Eve, I'm going to, I'm going to send a savior. And it it was when he, he said to the serpent, your offspring and hers are going to have a battle and he's going to, he's going to, you're going to bruise his heel and he's going to crush your head serpent. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on the whole rest of the Bible is the story about this coming serpent crusher. And, and all of a sudden it just like, it made sense to me. And he said, and then in revelation, when, when Jesus comes back, he's coming back because that's, that's the end of the love story. That's when, that's when the prince comes back on that white horse and, and he's coming back for you. And he's coming back for me because he loves us. The cross is not the end of his love. It was the crescendo. And then the end of the story though is when he comes back and then we get to go for eternity with him to experience that love like it was in the garden and and to have the bible explained to me like that i could not wait to get in there and understand it and even to this day i can't stand it if there's something i don't understand about it how it fits into that whole story. And that's how it started. Thank you so much for sharing that. It just like gave me goosebumps from my head to my toes. Like, I just love it when someone will share, this is how God got a hold of my heart. And I began to understand his love was in these words, right? Like his love for my life is in these words. Yeah. And then that love just, and you know, the, the, the real, um, connecting with his love. I, I think that came later. I had to have, I had to be able to, uh, and maybe, you know, everybody's so different in, in what gets them, you know, and what gets them to make that first commitment and what gets them pulled in at first. For me, it was intellectual. I needed to know, I needed mm-hmm. to understand it first. Um, many folks that keeps them from scripture uh, a lot of times, um, but that's what drew me in at first. For me, the actual feeling of love, the actual fathoming of that emotion of love that came later for me. Mm-hmm. Um, when I, I was actually teaching a ladies Bible study, I was doing Ann Spangler's women of the Bible and it's 52, um, different women of the Bible. And it's a, a a woman each week. And it has five different days in that week. And each of the days she did a little different something. So one day, you know, well, it's a wonderful study. And I think she's done updates on it since then. I think I studied it in 90 something, you know, um, it's been around a long time, but in that she, she talked about, a, a, I think it was a princess in song of Solomon or a shepherd princess, shepherdess princess. And I'm like, I, I've never even heard of this, a Shulamite princess. And I I'm thinking never have I, and I'm, I've been studying the Bible for a while by then. And I was so amazed by that. And so I went and I read Song of Solomon and it was just so thoroughly confusing to me. And like I said, I can't stand it if I can't understand it. So I read the Song of Solomon every day for like a week and I still couldn't get it. So I tried commentary, still couldn't get it because they just made me even more confused. Then I read different versions of it, you know, King James, oh my no, no, no. Couldn't get that. (laughs) Right. So then new King James, well, let's try that. No, 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 no. Then yeah, still couldn't NIV. And, and those were even different because, you know, they'd have the male person saying this and the female saying this, well, then I'd look at the NIV and they'd have the male 
maybe the female even saying some of that. And I'm like, well, what, who said what? And so by this time, I'm now reading it every day for two weeks. And I'm thinking, Lord, seriously, nobody can agree. What do I do? And he, I, I felt really strongly that I was supposed to just read the word in one version, pick one. It didn't matter. Just pick one and stick with it. So I read it every single day for over a year, all eight chapters. Hmm. And as I began to do that, he was doing some other things in my life that he began to reveal to me his love and the magnitude of it, the immensity of it. I went to a, I went to a personal retreat and someone had given me their winter coat because I'd forgotten mine. Of course I have, if my head wasn't tied on it, yeah, I'd forget <laughs> that too, but, and, and I was coming back. It was late at night. It was so cold wind coming off of a Northern Indiana Lake. And I, I thought, oh, I wish my husband was here. He'd put his arms around me and he'd, he'd warm me up. And, and the Lord said to me, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, yeah, but you know, I want that, I want that physical touch warmth. And the thought went through my mind about a time when my husband had, we were, we were in the Caribbean, our one and only cruise at that point. And we were snorkeling and our backs were up, you know, on the surface. And we started feeling this. I started feeling this ouchy on my back. And I thought, oh, what? In the? And I looked up and a storm had come up crazy fast. And it was, it was rain so hard that it was pelting mm. back. And then our guide said, come to the boat, come to the boat. And so I, I looked for my husband, couldn't find him. And I'm like, that me ever man for himself. So I went to the boat and, and so I get on the boat and my husband's not there and everybody else is coming and coming and my husband's not there. And I, now I'm thinking, Ooh, I really wish I'd have stayed out and looked for him. And then he finally, he's the last one on the boat and he looks at me and he grabs my shoulders and he said, I thought there were sharks. I was out looking for you. Mm. And I thought, oh, Lord Jesus, he would have given his life for me. And at that moment, here I am at this little conference and that, that just went through my mind and, and I'm walking back and I'm, I'm still just cold and teeth chattering. And Jesus said, I did give my life for you. And that's the kind of love that I, I've given you that kind of love on earth mm -hmm. so that you can understand my love in the song of songs. Wow. That's a beautiful story of not only your relationship with your husband, something you learned here, but also just how he uses those things to like, he uses his scripture and the words and the stories in scripture, but then he also uses our personal experience, right. To illustrate what he's trying to get across to us about how much he loves us, his devotion to us, his faithfulness to us. Thank you for sharing that piece of your story. And it, it reminds me of something that you said when you were talking earlier about um, about the Bible. Let's see, you were talking about how to get it. Like it, it, like it comes in different ways, you know, it depends on different people want, I'm trying to say how you said it, different people need to get it in different ways. I think is what you were saying. And what's so fascinating and wonderful and mysterious to me is that no matter how we need to get it, we get it in the Bible. Like he, like if we need it intellectually, he helps us see it intellectually. When we need it emotionally, he see, you know, and I, that's a fascinating, that's what that means about the, it being alive, right? Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's interesting in Job and I don't remember exactly where it is, but um, that's another scripture that has meant so much to me in Job. Um, it, it says, you know, first God speaks one way and then another, and sometimes in dreams in the night and then others, you know, and, and, and isn't that so true? Yes. He, he knit us together in our mother's wombs. And so he knows exactly 
exactly what is going to minister and to speak to our spirit, to our soul. We may not understand ourselves. You know, the heart is deceptible, deceptive above all things who can know it. Only one can know it. The one who created us, right? The one who can truly know the heart he put inside us. Mm-hmm. Um, even we ourselves can't truly know it. But he, when he speaks, and that's that's the other thing. I, you know, people have said, I don't know how to hear God. No, you're right. You don't. I don't either. But once I realized my stupid is not bigger than God's sovereignty, Mm -hmm. you know? Right. Yes. And as we, as we spend time with him in his word and abiding in him, as he instructs us to do, we do know his voice as he tells us we will like, like I, sometimes I can't articulate how I know it. I can't prove how I know it, but I just know I know it. Right. And so we figure out how to know it, even though we can't even manufacture knowing it at a particular time. Right. Like we just like it, sometimes it just hits me and I think, Oh, I understand now. I understand what you want me to do. You know, five minutes ago I was chaotic and confused and now I get it. And I don't know how I get it, but I do. And I'm so grateful that you speak to me that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm convinced that there is a point in when the Holy spirit comes, when we say yes to Jesus and that Holy Spirit comes, I'm convinced that the Holy Spirit brings with him this extra part of the anatomy called the knower. Mm-hmm. Know in my knower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Once that Holy Spirit is there, he brings that knower. And and I know in my knower when he says something. Well, and it's like going back to Song of Solomon where there's a language between the lovers Mm -hmm. that they understand from each other. And I believe that about our relationship with God. He speaks a language. He sings a song over us that maybe no one else would understand Now he would help them understand it. You know what I mean? But like, it's ours. He has this way of talking to us. He knows our get it. He knows how we get it and he knows how to speak it. So we get it. And I'm, yeah. Yeah. If we're married, if you're married, if you have children, even a parent, I, if I can, I can hear my daughters on the phone. My mom could hear me when I would call her on the phone. She can hear my voice and say, "Hmm, hmm. you today." Yeah, what's going on in there today? Yeah, there's a there's a knowing that comes with that connection, mm-hmm. that intimacy, that yeah. connection. Yeah. So. Yeah. So good. I want to circle all the way back to something you said at the beginning, because I have a question about it. And I'm wondering if the listener does too. You talked about your husband when you were first dating him being different. A couple of different times you said he was just different. And I'm thinking that maybe would you tell us just a little bit more about that? Because he was a man who knew his word, right? Who knew the word. And yeah. somehow that translated to you seeing something different in him. Will you just talk about that for a second? Because I think there's a life application there that would be important for us to to hear. Sure, sure. So neither of us were believers in high school. Um, he, he came from a background where he did not go to church at all in, well, I won't say that. So when he was in school, uh, he, he had, his parents were very moral, but did not go to church. And so he went to VBS a couple of times, got kicked out both times. Um, but (laughs) he, um, very good people, wonderful, but mm, not, mm -mm, not religious. And, and he was a jock. He was, you know, foul mouth, redheaded, hot tempered. Yeah. Mm, Everything was an injustice, you know? Okay. That's who I thought I was going out with. Yeah. We were great friends in high school. I mean, really good friends. I could, I could cuss like a sailor right along with him. That was not who showed up. He showed up in a tie for a football game. I'm mm. like, what in the world did they do, right? He he tells me on our way to the football game that his college roommate had wrecked his 67 Mustang into a parked car and was laughing about it. And I'm like, and he's still alive to 
tell people about that. So there was this immeasurable peace. Mm. There was this um, overall perspective change in him. There was an understanding of life and people that before was missing that there was a maturity in the perspective um, that went way beyond uh, what I had at that point because all I could see was that I lost I I, I thought I was going to be married in a year or two I thought I had my whole life planned out but all I could see in front of me was a husband and babies that's all I wanted. I, I'd never had any ambition beyond. I wanted a husband and babies. I wanted to be a wife and a mom. And his ambition now was, I want to be a full-time Christian and serve Jesus. And I'm not sure what else is going to happen, but that's what I know I want to do. And I'm thinking, that's weird. That's really weird. Mm-hmm. Because even my mom and dad that were crazy Christian people, they didn't even do that. Yeah. So what happened to you? Yeah. yeah. Really what happened to you? Yeah. So he was like, he was more at peace than they were, but he was also um, more fanatical than they were. Sure. And so it was, it was, um, more attractive, but also more scary. Sure. Yeah. Because it's risky, right? What do you mean? You're just going to do whatever he tells you to do. What do you mean? We're going to follow him wherever you, we, what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Mean full time. Christian. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Could you, could you clarify? That? Right. You... you mean like all the time? <laughs> like, like, yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, talk to us a little bit about your habits now. What kind of study habits do you have now? And how does that relate to your writing? What's the difference for you between like studying for work and studying for MISU, resources, anything like that? Just how, what does study look like for you in this season? You know, I've, I, I often tell people that I, um, I only write because it gives me an excuse for, to research my Bible, because I, I have always loved research. It is my favorite thing. Um, before I was writing, I was teaching adult Sunday school classes or Bible studies or whatever. And I pretty much spent my day researching the Bible. So, um, the, the purpose I think is different now, obviously, but, um, my day is very similar. I love the research of it all. And, um, what I have discovered is I I could research all day long and into the night actually and just be a happy camper, um, but now I actually have to write and I have deadlines and so I can't do that anymore. So uh, the thing that I have found and I I just love it is um, it's called the ESV Illuminated Bible Journal and. It doesn't matter to me what version of scripture necessarily that I'm reading. I can do whatever. I I cut my teeth on NIV, so it's it's what's most familiar. It's what comes to mind when I remember a scripture or try to quote something. Um, and so sometimes that's you know that's home to me. That that's what I need when I'm in especially dark season or a hard mm -hmm. season. I'll go back to NIV, but. A lot of times for my, my morning quiet time, I'll try a different version because oftentimes I'll see something different in a different version than what I'm used to. And so I, I enjoy doing that. So these, the ESVs have been really helpful in that the ESV Bible journal, it has ESV scripture on one side of the page and then, so I, and I mark up my Bible like crazy. And then on the other side of the page, 
it's completely blank. And whether you're an illustrator and you love to draw or whether you're like me, I can't draw anything and I just journal. Um, but what I've done with this is my very favorite thing is I'll take half of the page of scripture and I limit myself to that alone. So it may be three, four, five verses, and that's all I get for the day. And I heard, uh, you know, it's like a, a, you know, if you've seen the movie, A Beautiful Mind, it, it's a diet of the mind. I only allow myself those few verses. And then I heard a long time ago, um, Jill Briscoe, she, she said, I wait on the Lord and I tell him, I'm going to sit here until you speak to me in word or concept. And that's what I do. I wait on the Lord with those three, four or five verses. And, and sometimes seriously, when I'm in Leviticus, oh dear, whew, three to five verses in Leviticus, that can be a long wait. Um, but it's amazing what he can say to you when you stubbornly wait to hear from him. And then I, I only allow myself half of that journal page to write a letter to him. I'm right. I'm not writing a journal as in, you know, please bless aunt Matilda's big right toe. I, I'm writing to him what he has spoken to me, to my heart from those three to five verses. This is what I hear you saying to me, Lord. And this is how I see it affecting my life today. This moment in the, in today's circumstance that I'm facing. Mm -hmm. And I only get about three inches of page to write on. And for somebody that writes, you know, I sneeze 10,000 words. So that that's kind of exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah limit that. Um, it's been a wonderful discipline mm -hmm. for me Yeah, because it, it keeps me at 15 to 30 minutes and the Lord does some major business with me yeah. in that time. Yeah. And, um, it's, it, it's good. It's good. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Our regular, my regular listeners here know that I, a lot of times I study one. So every week we have a verse, we study one word in that verse and we look in the original language and all this. And sometimes what he does in one word is oh, yeah astronomical in my heart. Yes. And I used to think I, I've learned this. Uh, this was like an error in my thinking, N not that there's any condemnation in that, but I used to think if I don't have an hour to give him, I'll just need to wait till tomorrow because I, right. And I have learned, I'm like, some days I love sitting for an hour and I have an hour and I'm, I want it. And I just write a long time, but I, sometimes what he does in 10 or 15 minutes oh. is so shockingly important <laughs> that I just, I've learned that if you, if your day, if your morning has started differently, if you have this or that, whatever, just pause for a few minutes, Ange, because you do not know what he has for you in a, a short amount of time. Cause he, he does, he's not, he's not bound by time to speak to us the way we're bound by time to you know, speak to others or whatever. So yeah. Yeah. So good. I've found that a lot of times that 10 or 15 minute lesson that he, he, he impresses on your heart, like a laser that sticks with me. Same way longer than if I have an hour and I love those hours because I, mean, I just, mm -hmm. babe, it is yeah. just like heaven mm -hmm. comes down yeah. and it's just, yummy it, it's like sitting in a hot tub it's just relaxing and wonderful and lovely and nourishing but those 10 minute whammies they stick with me I mean they it, sometimes those will stick with me not just all day but I mean all week I'll be telling people on the next Sunday do you know what I found out you know I mean 
So sometimes, yeah, those five mm-hmm. or 10 minute times yeah. are. Okay. Yeah. They're so crucial for me sometimes too, to like turn a tide or break a stronghold or something like it just, it's like it, like it almost sometimes draws a line in the sand that I wasn't expecting when I'm like, Oh, something has given or shifted or released or, and I'm just like, I, I know it's true. I can't explain it, but I know that it's true. So yeah. yeah so good. It could not be even something that I'm and this is what I've seen happen so many times. It may or may not be something that I am experiencing right in that moment. It may be a truth that is just a general truth. And then boom, somebody comes into my life in the next day or three days or week. And I get to share that and yes. it throws them away. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I've never seen that like that scripture like that. And I'm like, you know, I haven't either, but the Lord knew you were coming. Yeah. Right. And when we articulate it to someone else, this happens to me. I don't know about you, Misu, but I'm betting it does when I am able, it's crazy. Like sometimes I'm like, I didn't articulate that well, that way, that well to you, that was the Holy spirit articulating it to you. And as I am saying it out loud, it is solidifying itself in my heart as well. Crazy, but absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then they think you're so smart. (laughs) And then you're like, I'm, so I'm, totally, I'm not smart at all. I know. Oh, Just God. a willing vessel. <laughs> oh, that's um, totally I did not do that one. Uh-uh. Yeah. Well, I, let's shift gears just a little bit. Cause I want tell us about kind of either how Bible study like affects your, what, what, what do you want to tell us about your books as a whole, your current project, something that you're working on right now, just share with us how the Bible study is keeping you uh, inspired, encouraged, and what's that overflow is like in terms of your ministry and your writing? Okay. I, it just, it is my ministry. I, I, I write biblical fiction. I hate that terminology because it's like an oxymoron. It is not fic, you know, the Bible yes. is truth, capital T. Thank you very much. Um, it's so biblical novels. Let's talk about that. But, uh, I, I write, I write that and I write the Old Testament because I've heard so many times heard people say, Oh, I don't read the Old Testament, he's a God of wrath in the Old Testament, he's got of love. And then, no, 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 he's the same, he's the same. And Jesus is all over the Old Testament, so so that's why I, I focus on the Old Testament because I want people to see Jesus in the Old Testament, I want him to see that crimson thread in there. Um, and and so the study that I do in um, just in my research and, and all of that is just so yummy and I love it. And I, I pull it into the stories and what I try really hard to do is so truth is the foundation of any story. So I, I kind of like with the song of Solomon, I don't have the luxury anymore of reading my my scriptural foundation for a year before I start writing. So it's, it's usually more like three or four weeks of reading all of the scripture to get that truth foundation really, really solid before I then start doing historical research. And that can be any of the extra biblical accounts of Josephus or, or some of the rabbinical literature, the Talmud, or the uh, the Mishnah, the any of pseudepigrapha, some of those kinds of things, um, and then you know, of course, archaeological information and atlases and all of that, and that, that's just you know, I get up to my eyeballs in that, and that's so much fun. Um, and then, and those are kind of the building blocks that I, you know, that I kind of create the story with, and I find some of my minor characters in the Jewish histories. Um, and then the creative fiction is kind of the mortar that holds those building blocks together on top of that truth foundation. And, and I try to create this story home where the reader walks in and they, they feel like it's all real. And then they're like, huh, I, I wonder, I wonder what is in the Bible and what is creative fiction and which ones are true fact from history. And, and then they, they absolutely have to go back and look at their Bible and see. Right. 
my purpose. That's my whole purpose for writing a novel. It's not so that they'll stop at reading my novel. My novel is just a bridge to get them to go to the Bible. And it's, it's a bridge to get them to understand some of the cultural aspects of scripture so that when they get into their Bible, they're not absolutely appalled when a 92-year-old high priest marries a 16-year-old mm -hmm. because there's this political union that has to happen. Ew, gross. But it it is what it is. It was the culture of the time. And so let's, you know, let's make it ah, yeah. uh, talk about it and it has to happen. And so there we go. Yeah. Will you give us just a little peek into maybe your most recent, uh, tell us what your most recent book is about? I am working on, I'm so excited. I Honestly, this is probably the most excited I've been about any project um, since my Song of Solomon. Uh, this is David. I get to write the wives of David and it's his Hebron wives. So it's the second Samuel um, two through five. It is Ahinoam, Abigail, Makah, Haggith, um, Abital, and Igla. The ones that, I mean, Abigail is the only one anybody ever knows anything about. And so, yeah, I, so it's a four book series. I'm writing it for Bethany house and I'm right now in the midst of my first edit on a mm. and the, name, uh, the title of this book is brave. Oh, I can't wait. That sounds so great. I love I, it. I love it so much. I love it so much. Okay, friends. So I am going to, in the show notes today, I'm going to put Misu's website, all the places that you can find and follow her, the places you can stay updated on what she is writing and releasing. Is there any other place other than that, a call to action or any other thing you'd like me to add, Misu, before we close this day? You know, the, yes, get on my website, look around. It's kind of my home on the internet, but also I, tell them to sign up for my newsletter I won't bug them um, once once a month is all I'll send. And there's always some fun and they'll get to download a free novel, a uh, free novella. Yeah. 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 If they sign up for that. And then they can they can kind of see how I write. And that'll let them know if they if they want to look if that's me. a good place to hang out. So oh, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. What a treasure you are. I'm so excited to have had this conversation with you. And friend, again, I will link all of that stuff. Um, where you can find, follow, keep updated, subscribe to the newsletter, all that kind of good stuff will be in the show notes today. And Misu, just one more time, thank you so much for your time, but also not just your time today, but the time that you give day in and day out to be in the word so that you can write the things that help us stay in the word too. Oh, thank you so much. It's so fun to talk about the word. I love it. I love it. And thank you friend for listening until next time. Peace. It seems so basic, doesn't it, to believe God loves us, and yet at the root of so many of the lies we're tempted to believe is the ease in which we call that into question. We doubt His love. We forget His love. We imagine He places conditions on His love for us. But He doesn't do any of those things. He loves. He provides. He protects. He guides. He sings over us. He calls us friend. He thinks of us all the time. God is crazy in love with you, friend. And I hope this conversation with me, Sue, serves as a tangible reminder of that truth. All the places to connect with Misu and her work are linked in today's show notes, and I encourage you to learn more about the beautiful books she writes. If you haven't yet, I'd be so grateful if you would subscribe or follow the podcast on whatever directory you're using to listen. It only takes a second, and it guarantees you'll see new episodes as soon as they drop. And if someone came to mind as you were listening today, maybe you have a friend who's a huge Misu Andrews fan, right? If someone came to mind, I would love it if you would share this episode out with them. Inviting them into what we're doing here is another great way to support the show. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I will drop another guest episode in a few weeks as God opens the door for me to have these conversations. And until then, I pray wherever your day takes you, you are walking in the confident knowledge that you are a beloved, cherished, child of God. Peace.